Now on 18 Eyewitness News. Farmington schools are testing technology in the classrooms. Clearwater High School will be hosting a registration night for Three Rivers College. And MoDOT is launching Missouri on the move to hear from you. All of these stories are coming up. Some warm weather is on the way for Southeast Missouri. What will we see? I'll let you know coming up. Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello everybody, I'm Fred Dawkins. Here's the top stories that we're working on for you on 18 Eyewitness News. Farmington schools are testing the use of technology in the classroom with a number of pilot projects. Superintendent Dr. Natalie Thomas told 18 Eyewitness News that perhaps the biggest obstacle is internet bandwidth. Bring your own device movement is really enticing. Um, it, it, it seems like it makes a lot of sense. The issue we have to think about though is how do you power those? How many devices can a district uh, afford with bandwidth? However, Dr. Thomas says some class projects involving kids bringing in their own devices are underway. We do have isolated projects that are going on, uh, especially at the middle school and the intermediate level with very targeted activities. And again, because they're pilot projects and they are small, we know how many devices are in operation in terms of that bandwidth. Dr. Thomas says even when a school is set up for wireless internet access, there will only be enough bandwidth to power the school's devices. Well, now Dustin Kopp is here. Dustin, looks like warm weather on the way. That is right, Fred. We are going to see a warm-up on the way from southeast Missouri. Nice warm temperatures. Let's take a look at temperatures right now. 34 in Festus, 37 in Ironton, Piedmont, 35, 35 in Poplar Bluff and Cape Girardeau, as well as in Van Buren. As we go through the day tonight, we're going to see temperatures in the 30s, 37 at 7 p.m. Clear skies. Clear skies remain overnight. Temperature of 35 at at 9 p.m. at midnight, a temperature of 33. Let's check out your first forecast. More on the warm up on the way, plus a chance of some wintry precipitation for the weekend. I have all the details coming up later in weather. Three Rivers College will host a registration night Thursday at Clearwater High School. Principal Paul D'Amico says staff will be available to help folks sign up. And we'll have staff available uh, here at the high school to enroll uh, students, uh, talk about financial aid, get all that set up, uh, all that's part of the, the picture as well. Those interested in taking classes can choose a web-based course or those taught at the high school. D'Amico says they can also assist with any placement test. In some courses, uh, there needs to be uh, uh, what's called a compass test uh, taken uh, to determine which classes you're eligible for, and, and that can be handled here as well. Three Rivers College registration night is Thursday from 5 until 7 at Clearwater High School's guidance office. Classes start on January 14th. Poplar Bluff schools are partnering with the Boys and Girls Club to help at-risk students. Executive Director of the club, Chris Russian, tells 18 Eyewitness News about their award-winning after-school program, the Power Hour. What we'll do is we will go through their planners. We'll know what their homework is by contacting the teachers at the school. We'll go over that homework. We'll help them get that homework completed. And it reinforces all the lessons that they learned that day in school. Russian says for kids who put in the work, there's a reward each month. And we reward our kids by doing monthly power hour parties, essentially. Just like the big kid world, you work hard, you get rewarded. While the Power Hour started and continues at the Boys and Girls Club, the program is now in four Poplar Bluff schools, Lake Road, Eugene Field, and Oak Grove Elementary Schools, along with the Poplar Bluff Kindergarten Center. St. Genevieve residents can look forward to a safer walk to the community center thanks to the Progress Parkway Trail. City Administrator Martin Toma says a grant will cover the majority of the project's costs. It would fund 80% uh, of the cost of a trail between the end of Parkwood, which kind of dead ends into a field that's owned by the Catholic Church, and extend it through that field to Progress Parkway, 
which is a uh, pedestrian-friendly road that uh, the community center is on. Toma says the new trail will significantly improve safety. And that way people could get, without having to go on highways M or 32, uh, to the community center and back and avoid conflicts with the traffic on the state highways. The total amount of the Missouri Department of Transportation Enhancement Grant for the trail is $280,000. And when we come back, MoDOT launches its Missouri on the Move campaign. That story coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. For 15 years, Heartland Furniture and Appliance has been the leader in price for restonic bedding. Whirlpool built Crossley appliances, Frigidaire appliances, sofa sets, recliners, accent furniture, and White's metal detectors. Same day delivery with no waiting. We are fast becoming this area's leader in the home furnishing and appliance business. Need a little cash? Payday loans are available in each store. We'd love to have you come see us at one of our three locations on both sides of Main Street in Piedmont, Business 60 in Dexter, and next to Current River Ford in Donovan. Heartland Furniture and Appliance, 223-3200. How can heat also be cool? When it comes from targeted induction technology, which uses electromagnetic waves to quick heat your pan, boiling up to 40% faster, while the surface around it stays perfectly cool to the touch. It's faster, hotter, and, well, cooler. Hi, Bob Sebaugh at Sebaugh Furniture and Appliance. Come and see this and other great features and benefits that will amaze you. Now on sale at Sebaugh Furniture and Appliance in downtown Fredericktown. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. 18 Eyewitness News continues. The Missouri Department of Transportation wants to hear from you. When resident engineer Jason Williams visited our 18 Eyewitness News studios, he told us MoDOT is launching the Missouri on the campaign this month. We're in basically that is a, an effort on MoDOT's part to engage the community uh, on major transportation related issues. Um, and what we're trying to do is, is, is gather their, their input and their insight at, on, tra on major transportation issues and, and, and needs. Williams tells us that MoDOT will be holding listening sessions around the state to get Missourians feedback. We, you know, we really feel like that they need to, to be involved with that. We need to listen to Missourians and know what they want out of their transportation system. And so we're using uh, this campaign as a way to engage citizens of Missouri, business owners, uh, municipalities, legislators, on what is it they want out of the transportation system in the future. Williams says the feedback that they gather will be used as MoDOT updates its 20-year plan. An emergency preparedness summit is set for this Wednesday morning in Poplar Bluff. Butler County Emergency Management Agency Executive Director Robbie Myers tells 18 Eyewitness News that Joplin Police Chief Lane Roberts will share lessons they learned following the May 2011 tornado. And Myers says the best way to deal with an emergency is to prepare for it in advance. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We know that we're going to get it, whether it's an ice storm or a tornado or an earthquake. There are just some simple things we all can do to better prepare ourselves to sustain ourselves. Myers adds that the summit is open to anyone who'd like to attend. That anyone from the area that wants to get their families better prepared and help their community get better prepared for times of disaster are more than welcome. While there's no cost to attend, folks are asked to register at the Poplar Bluff Chamber of Commerce's website. The Emergency Preparedness Summit will be at the Black River Coliseum Wednesday morning from 9 until 1. The East Missouri Action Agency has funding for 300 free mammograms. Larissa Slover says the agency has received a $76,000 grant from the Susan G. Komen Foundation. And that provides diagnostic screening mammograms, ultrasounds, you know, follow-up care for uh, women of six counties. Our program here at Park Hills 
Um, we service six counties surrounding us. The screenings are available to women in Jefferson, Madison, Perry, St. Francis, St. Genevieve, and Washington counties and will be provided at six area hospitals. Larissa outlines the qualifications. They need to be 40 to 64 years old. They need to live in one of our six counties and they need to either be uninsured or underinsured. And by underinsured, we mean um, they do have insurance, but they have a copay or a deductible that they're just not able to make. If you'd like to make an appointment for a free mammogram, call Larissa at the East Missouri Action Agency. You'll find her number by clicking this story at our website, kdkz18.com. The Missouri Department of Conservation is reporting a new mountain lion sighting. This one is in Carter County. Now, the department has confirmed a photograph of a mountain lion taken by a trail camera on December 21st on private land near Van Buren. According to the mountain lion response team, some sightings or photographs may be of the same animal, but the department cannot confirm individual animals without DNA evidence. If you'd like to report a sighting, we have the contact information at our website, kdkz18.com. We're going to see some more mayor move into southeast Missouri, but some wintry precipitations on the way too. I'll give you all the details in your extended forecast coming up next. When someone comes in a mental area's emergency department, our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. extended hours? Let the UPS store pack and ship your gifts. Hi, I'm Steve from the UPS store in Farmington, Missouri. Me and my staff would like to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now, here's your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast with Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. It's been a nice day here in Southeast Missouri and we got some more nice weather on the way. We also have some rain and some wintry precipitation. A lot to talk about. Let's take a look at our weather headlines for southeast Missouri. And we're going to talk about the sunshine sticking around for the next couple of days. Nice warm air is here for a while in southeast Missouri. It looks like rain is on the way for Thursday with more possible for the weekend, including a possible wintry mix. Currently here in southeast Missouri, temperatures are in the 30s. 34 right now in Festus, St. Genevieve at 35, Ironton 37, Ellington right now at 36, 35 in Piedmont and Van Buren, as well as in Poplar Bluff and Cape Girardeau. And currently here at the studio, we have a temperature of 38 degrees under a clear sky. Feels like 33 with current dew point at 20, 47% humidity and a south wind at 7 miles per hour. Going through the day on your Tuesday, plenty of sunshine throughout the Midwest. Nice warm temperatures compared to what we've seen for a while. We're going to see that for tomorrow in the next couple of days. I'll show you that in the extended forecast. 29 in clear skies for your overnight low. Temperatures in the 20s for southeast Missouri tonight. Then for tomorrow, near 50 in most areas. Plenty of sunshine. South wind 5 to 10. And the next several days look like this. On your Wednesday, partly sunny, 51. 55 with some showers in the area on Thursday. Look at that, near 60 on Friday. But then... Bad news. We got some more rain moving in on Saturday with temperatures in the mid 50s, low 40s with a wintery mix possible on Sunday. And then on Monday, sunshine returns, but it's going to be cold 36 degrees. And then look at our weekend forecast here in southeast Missouri 42 for your high on Saturday with a chance of some wet weather here in southeast Missouri. Better chance of wintry precipitation on Sunday. 
as a wintery mix as possible with a high of 29. That is checking your storm tracker weather forecast. More details are located at kdkz18.com. Just click on the weather tab. Today's two-minute tour of Missouri starts in the Mississippi, where the Army Corps of Engineers says efforts taken to keep a crucial stretch of the drought-starved river open to barge traffic should be a sufficient avenue to avoid a shutdown. The Corps points to crews clearing treacherous bedrock from a channel near Thebes, Illinois. But shipping groups warn if the waterway drops to three feet on the river gauge, barge weight restrictions would effectively halt shipping. The boyfriend of a woman who allegedly shoplifted a bag of Chips Ahoy from a St. Louis convenience store shot and killed one man who tried to stop her and wounded another. 33-year-old Kenneth Payne is being held without bond on charges of first-degree murder and assault. According to the store owner, a clerk and a customer were confronting the woman who stuffed the bag of cookies into her jacket when Payne pulled out a handgun and fired. Governor Jay Nixon has appointed Michael Ponder of Cape Girardeau to the Missouri University Board of Curators, which oversees the operation of the four-campus system. Ponder is a partner in a Cape Girardeau law firm who's served on the State Board of Education since 2009. The governor has appointed Ponder for a term ending January 1, 2019. In a related story, Governor Nixon has appointed former Cape Girardeau Mayor Jay Kunston to the Southeast Missouri State University Board of Regents. Kunston is Executive Vice President, Chief Lending Officer, and a Board of Director at the First Mid-Missouri State Bank. His term will also expire January 1, 2019. And a St. Louis area man is accused of stealing more than $500 from his nephew's piggy bank and spending the money on drugs and prostitutes. St. Louis County prosecutors have charged 30-year-old Baron Calmes Jr. with one count of felony stealing. Investigators say Calmes took the money from his four-year-old nephew's bank last summer after first asking the boy's mother, his sister, if he could borrow some change. And that's your two-minute tour of Missouri for today. Coming up in today's Your Life segment on 18 Eyewitness News, in a very special edition of Focus on the Family, we'll see how expectant parents can handle the worst possible news. I'm Stacy Johnson. New Year, new you. How to make those New Year's resolutions last. Tips ahead on Money Talks News. Your health is brought to you by Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy of Deloge, where caring for you and about you is our business. From taking time to explain your medication, offering a caring touch to a full line of medical equipment, supplies, and diabetic shoes. We'll help you understand your options and assist you with Medicare drug plan enrollment with a comfortable waiting area, convenient drive through or free delivery. Caring for our neighbors is our business. Your locally owned Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy, just off of Highway 67 at the Deloge exit. An innovative option is now being offered to expected parents who find themselves in the worst possible situation. Dr. Bill Meyer explains in today's Focus on the Family. That morning we went in for a routine ultrasound and received the diagnosis that our baby had a fatal anomaly. She was going to live maybe even minutes, maybe just a few hours after birth. This is the worst kind of nightmare scenario for expectant parents. Typically, the medical advice they're given is to terminate the pregnancy as soon as possible. The doctor, after the ultrasound, came in and said, you know what, let's just schedule this induction and end this pregnancy and you can get pregnant again and, and go for your next baby. In the past, there really was very little alternative. I mean, everybody just talked about termination of pregnancy. But now, there's an alternative for these families. Dr. Calhoun is an expert in perinatal hospice, a care program that allows women with these tragic diagnoses to carry their baby to term grieving as they would the loss of any child, but also enjoying the limited time they have together. She lived less than an hour. <laughs> Pearl Jean was her name, and uh, yeah, she, we just had a few tender moments with her, and you know, we'll cherish those moments uh, forever. 
but you know, we feel like that was healthy for us to do it that way. Mothers who carry their babies to term in these situations may actually fare better psychologically than those who terminate the pregnancy. The psychological damage that's done to these patients, particularly the mothers, by having abortions is significant. There's been several studies look at this, and the post-traumatic stress levels can be as high as 17%. Carrying the baby to term can allow family and friends to say goodbye. We had a big service. We had a few hundred people at her memorial service. And we want to honor her, too. We want her, to, you know, we want to honor her. If you find yourself in this most difficult situation, know there are options. A good starting point for information is on the internet at www.perinatalhospice.org. For Focus on the Family, I'm Dr. Bill Meyer. For more valuable information on life's issues, relationships, and family, visit our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the Focus on the Family link. It's the time of year when many of us consider making some changes in our lives. Money expert Stacy Johnson shows us some tips to help those New Year's resolutions stick. Ah, the new year, full of hope and promise. It's a great time to make resolutions. Make a resolution to exercise more in the new year? Lots of people do, but you know research shows that four out of five people will break their resolutions often before February 1st. Want to have your resolution stick this year? Here's some tips that are going to help. First. Plan early. Write down your goal and plan the path to getting there. Next, make your goals realistic and achievable. You're not going to drop 50 pounds in a month, but you could lose five. Small, achievable goals are better than grandiose goals that never get done. And don't forget that positive attitude. You know, change takes time, dedication, sometimes even a little heavy lifting. Keeping a positive attitude, that's what's going to take you there. Next, limit your resolutions. Too many goals at once is going to diffuse your focus, so pick one and work at it. And finally, forgive yourself some setbacks. You're going to have a few bumps in the road, but don't get bogged down. Just pick yourself up and move forward. Bottom line, everybody can change, and there's no reason if you've got a goal that you should wait. Make yourself a goal. It doesn't matter if you haven't succeeded in the past, because this time you will. And if you need more tips, I've got them waiting for you right here at MoneyTalksNews.com. Just do a search for 2013 Resolutions. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. As Stacy said, he's got more information and links at his website. To get there, just go to our website, KDKZ18.com. Click on the Money Talks link under the Lifestyles menu. And coming up in sports, the puck could drop at the Scott Trade Center as early as next week. The Cardinals round out their minor coaching staff, and Mizzou escapes with a two-point win at home against Bucknell. It's all coming up here in sports on Channel 18. Tips to make you money delivered daily. The totally free Money Talks newsletter. Sign up now and get my money makeover video, a $50 value, as my gift. MoneyTalksNews.com Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs, and they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call one. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News. Blues fans could see the puck drop at the Scott Trade Center as early as next week. On the 113th day of the NHL lockout, the league and the Players Association agreed on a tentative new collective bargaining agreement that will put the Blues and the rest of the team back on the ice. Former Cardinals pitcher Jason Simatachi and former Red Sox pitching coach Randy Neiman are joining the Cardinals minor league coaching staffs. Simon Tachi, who pitched for the Redbirds back in 2002 to 2004, will serve as pitching coach for the lower Class A Peoria. Neiman will be Class AA Springfield's new pitching coach. 
Phil Pressey scored 17 points of his career-high 26 points in the second half on Saturday as number 12 Mizzou escaped at home a final of 66-64 over Bucknell. Lawrence Bowers continues his excellent season, adding 16 points and 9 rebounds. Mizzou opens play in the Southeastern Conference on Tuesday at home against Alabama. And the Rams know who they're going to be playing next season. St. Louis takes on both the AFC South and the NFC South divisions. New Orleans, Tampa Bay, Jacksonville and Tennessee will also all visit the Edward Jones Dome in 2013, while the Rams will travel to Atlanta, Carolina, Houston and Indianapolis. By finishing third in the NFC West, they get a third place team in the, in the NFC North, Chicago at the Dome. The Rams also travel to the third place team in the NFC East, that would be Dallas. In addition, the Rams play their normal home and away games in the NFC West schedule. That's today in sports. Fred and Dustin, guys, it's back to you. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Look at your forecast. When we go through the rest of this evening, we're going to see a chilly evening, but not too bad. Clear skies, 37 degrees at 7 p.m., 35 by 9 by midnight, a temperature of 33. That does it for all of us here at 18 Eyewitness News. Hope you have a good night. News Watch is next. We'll see you right back here at 10 o'clock. Do you see news happening in your neighborhood? Email us at news at kdkz.tv.